A month ago I found myself in Santiago Airport in Chile en route to one of the most amazing photographic experiences I was, well, probably will ever have. More on that in later videos. As I said though in a recent video I want to challenge myself more to do more photography. So that's, that's my plan basically. Go out every week, take photos. And this seemed like a less than perfect place to do it. What could be less inspiring? than an airport when you're en route to Antarctica and Patagonia. Anyway, I did what any pale skinned Brit would do and headed out into the scorching midday Chilean sun armed with my Fujifilm X100V. And I thought I'd see if I could get any good images in what I'm fairly confident is a pretty unphotographed location. I mean, why would it be? The key to success here, and I use the term success in the loosest possible way, is a total shift in mindset when it comes to photography. Let me show you the airport video and then I'll tell you about the mindset shift. Okay, I am at Santiago Airport. This is day one, day two of our trip down to Antarctica. And basically we've got four hours of sitting in a hotel where we can't check in. We can't really go anywhere because we can't leave all our camera stuff. So I've decided to set myself a bit of a challenge and walk around the airport and just see if I can take any photos. It's midday sun. I don't know where I am and it's an airport. I don't think you can get much more challenging than that. I went to get a croissant just before and there were two ladies sat here on the bench under the train. I didn't have my camera. I thought it looked really good and now they're gone. I need to find more stuff like that really. So these first few shots were what I just call warm-up shots and it's important to take warm-up shots because well you wouldn't expect to run a sub 10 100 meters without warming up. Not that that's what I was trying to do maybe a sub 20 or a sub 30 100 meters but at my age warming up is still pretty important. None of these are particularly great but it was an okay start. I did quite like how the light shone through on the road in this one, but I just couldn't really make it work with subjects passing through. There just seems to be either nobody or too many people. And given I'm not really the most patient person in the world, I didn't think it was worth hanging around. This one I sort of like in a minimalist kind of style, but I don't think it works as a photo. The roof kind of intersects with the sign there. And maybe if I tried to get the thing in focus as well, that might have helped a bit. I found these benches and these trees which I thought were quite nice and I tried to find an image here but didn't hang around too long because it was just pretty difficult. This shot gives a bit of a flavour for the walkway I was exploring which is pretty uninspiring I'm sure you'll agree. I then noticed these three benches and the pop of colour in them and I thought that area was worth exploring a little bit more. I feel with stuff like this that it, to make it work the verticals have to be completely straight so you can't point your camera down at all or up at all because that sends them off so to get these benches at the right height basically just going to squat down until I get to the right height to make sure those verticals stay straight. The heat was having such an impact on me I didn't realise I could just actually sit down on the corner of this bench despite having just put my camera on it. There we go. Someone seemed to enjoy it. This I really like. I love the colour from the benches. I love that there's three of them, which works better than two. I love the angle of the shadows of the roof. And I love how the left hand side, this silver wall, it, it doesn't distract you from the rest of the scene. It holds your attention on the other side where the benches are. And yeah, I think it's a really strong image. And if you can make out on here, but the airport is sort of surrounded by these mountains and they're on the other side as well. And there's these buildings in the way, which I guess are the terminals, which is a bit of a shame, but it'd be kind of nice to have a bit of a better view of the mountains, which you can see through that gap, hopefully, on that side as well. I looked at these benches for a bit but they didn't work and I think that was just because they were in the shade. If the light was different on them, maybe. I quite like this shot, I like the angles, the lines, the shadow, but it's just got no real subject. I think this one was really close to being a good shot. I love the arrangement of everything and the feel of it and I think if there was just 
one of those red benches or something against the wall in the middle there that would really help balance and anchor with the plane taking off on the other side. I've just ducked into the shade for a few minutes because it's really hot. I might be the only person ever to have got sunburn at an airport, which would kind of suck. But it's quite nice. It's a lot nicer than Manchester Airport. If you've never been to Manchester Airport, don't. This is a scene I worked with for a little bit. I really like the road going through under the bridge and the lines all converging towards the end and the shadow going across the middle and the crosswalk at the bottom. There are lots of things to pay attention to here, so I spent a bit of time experimenting. I think this is my favorite shot from here. I like the lone walker and how he's in silhouette, and it doesn't really bother me too much that he's leaving the frame rather than entering it. You'll notice none of the shots I'm taking actually match the images I'm showing at this point because the images I took were better than the ones I took whilst filming. Funny how if you concentrate on something, it, it improves. Anyway, this one I like quite a lot. The thing that bothers me a bit though is this woman on her own and her head and shoulders being in the shadow. I think if she was a bit lower down it would have made a much stronger image. I then saw this lady sitting on the wall and the shot doesn't really work, there's too much light at the top. Um, I think if there was some light on the ground that would have worked better. So I don't know, maybe it would have helped it balance it or maybe it just wasn't a shot with much potential. But because of that, I went looking for areas of light and stumbled across this on the other side of the terminal. Where I saw this guy, who sat on the same bench around 10 minutes. So I had ample opportunity to explore the area and try and work out the best composition, which didn't take too long. I really love the arrangement of everything in this scene. It's a photo that I really like. I can't quite put my finger on exactly why. It just feels nice everything's arranged nicely i love these light patches are just struggling with how to use them with people and them really i experimented a bit more with the light took some pictures of people walking through them this was probably the best of them and then i should have spent more time on this one i like how the lines on the road match the roof i love the pops of color on the pillars but i just didn't get a subject in the right spot surprisingly enough Taking pictures at an airport is hard, but I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's a it's a cool challenge looking for different things that I just wouldn't normally take pictures of. Um, so yeah, it's been fun. I'd recommend it. Not Manchester though, like I said. I quite like the look of this, but I feel like you need to shoot it straight on. And the problem you've got is that this lamp post right corner is really in the way so you need to kind of separate it and then that just isn't as good we need to separate it more than that i mean that kind of works if you get someone in the doorway but not many people are using the stairs today yeah this was wrong straight on wasn't the way to go the angle from the side was much better. I got the separation I spoke about and it just gave a bit more space around the subject as well. And, and then luckily enough, this guy came to walk down the stairs just at the right time and I got this shot, which was one of my favorites from that afternoon. So I then did what any photographer in his right mind would do and headed into a multi-story car park where I shot this, which I can't really explain. I liked how this car was peeking out from behind the wall and I like this a lot more at the time than I do in hindsight i just don't think it works too well you've got the yellow but there needs more color i think if the car was a different color that would probably work better maybe if it's like a metallic blue to contrast the yellow or something like that this shot would be a lot stronger but as a white car no nah, it's not for me maybe this works a bit better from this angle i don't know I'm not sure it does. It fills the frame too much at 35mm. On this I'm videoing, that's a lot better. It's got a lot of space around it. I'm just not sure it works at a 35mm focal length. I really need to get myself into some shape now, I think. So the plane taking off. Actually, the 
does this work with a bit of that reef in? That might be a bit better. If this reef takes a top of the frame then. Let's have a look. I think it's not got enough space on the right hand side. I just walked into a bin. All that stuff behind it's a bit messy. Mm. Not sure. That was correct. That doesn't work. There's not enough space around it. All that stuff on the right hand side is messy in the bottom left corner as well. I much prefer the shot I showed earlier from ground level. I think that works a lot better than this one. I realise I've just talked about that kind of towery bit and how it doesn't work, but I've still taken some pictures there. I think it's pretty important to, to do that, to take pictures of things that don't work because you get to kind of look at them at a later date and just take them into consideration a little bit more and be able to see exactly why they don't work. So I've taken them anyway, just so I can learn something from them really. Here's another one. I quite like this bin and the shadow next to it and the empty wall behind. And, but it's, I don't know if you can see on the, that there, it's right over to the left hand side of the frame. I kind of want it a bit more like that, but then you open up all this space to the right. So if you move round though, these benches come into play and the bin starts to intersect with the wall there. So it just doesn't work if you try that. Honestly, I've got no idea what I was thinking here. I think the sunstroke was starting to kick in because this is sh the only reason I've left it in is because my points about things intersect with each other is valid and it's probably something that needs to be considered when you're taking photos like this. Just try and make them a little better than this, which shouldn't be too hard. Um, we're back to the benches. There's definitely, I'm sure there's a photo with these benches, but I can't for the life of me work out what it is. It feels like we need to isolate one on its own, but every time I do that, the background just gets really messy. That work. Mm, I think the angle's too high to make that work. Right, I really haven't done this time because I'm wearing all black. I'm absolutely boiling and I need a drink. And uh, the lovely Santiago Airport Holiday Inn is calling my name. So before I hit the airport pool and continue the top of my tan, I managed to get a selfie in a lift. Something that I seem to do far too often. And then just before I got to the hotel, I saw this guy and I had a quick look at it. I didn't like how the post was in the way of him, so I kind of repositioned him. Before he noticed me and I shot this, which is better, but if I were to do it again, I'd probably try and get him a little bit more to the right so his head isn't intersected with the edge of the building. I'd also try and include the H of hotel in the sign at the top because if that said hotel, and it was pointing at the hotel, that would have been really nice. Maybe I'm being harsh on myself, maybe the Spanish for hotel doesn't have an H. So yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about mindset and how you think about photography. My approach to photography over the last few years has been really set. I'd only shoot at specific times, in specific weathers and in specific places. And this set of self-imposed rules was sort of designed to give me the best chance of getting the best shots. But all it seems to have done is, is hindered my creativity and my love of photography. I think that if you get a really strong idea of what you want to photograph in your head, it really makes photographing anything else quite difficult. And sometimes it, it stops you from even trying. If you have the opinion of, this place is boring, I'm never going to get any photos here, then no, you won't get any photos there. You'll struggle to get any photos anywhere apart from the best possible places and how often do you get to go there? Opinions like that, and I speak from experience of this, they, they hamper our progress photographically. A change in mindset is needed. If in your head you're only gonna photograph epic places, then everywhere else will appear boring. And these good photography opportunities won't present themselves all too often. So I decided to change my mindset. And now I'm making photography fit in with the elements of my life over which I don't have as much control. I can't be everywhere I wanna be at the times that I want to be there. And as such, I've got a much more open mind in terms of what I wanna photograph, when I can photograph it, or where I can take photos. 
I'm no longer restricted to golden hour or blue hour, which for years were the only times I allowed myself to use my camera. I know you could say that that airport was an interesting place and I was on my way to more interesting places, but at the end of the day, it was still an airport in the midday sun. An airport that I doubt has really been photographed and an airport I'm almost 100% convinced has never had a photography YouTube video made at it. I think by allowing my mind to be open to the possibility of there being photos at that airport, that's the only reason that I managed to get any. I could have just sat in a hotel and just thought, I'm at an airport, and then I'd have had nothing. Not all of my photos were great, but I learned a lot in that skin crisping hour, like the importance of sunblock. Out of the images shown, I really like these five shots. And this one I might even be tempted to launch a print store with, which hopefully will be coming soon. So not a bad return. Keep an eye out for my next video in which I will be showcasing the next stage of this trip, the slightly less boring Antarctic Peninsula. See you then.